Mr. President, what is your opinion about the current economic situation in the Eurozone? Where are the main weaknesses? I think uh, we, we have a, a problem which is due to the fact that our uh, overall growth potential is quite low uh, in the analysis, in my analysis, because of uh, lock, a, a lot of absence of appropriate uh, uh, structural reforms in uh, many, many countries. And uh, this appeared particularly visible after the crisis, in the crisis and after the crisis. So that is a big problem for all countries. Now, on top of that, we have the legacy of the difficulty of the countries that were under stress in the crisis and we have five countries or more that were under stress and so we have uh, the difficulty for those countries to recover they had to adjust it was unavoidable but of course it has a cost uh, in terms of growth and we have another uh, element which is uh, which is important which is the fact that the countries that have room for maneuvering that we are not under stress that have uh, a large uh, uh, amount of uh, current account surplus, for instance, have themselves a difficulty to restart actively their domestic demand and therefore their growth and job creation. So we have this combination. I uh, expect that it is only transitory, but of course it makes the present period quite demanding. Approaching uh, the point of no return on the risk of deflation. What is your opinion on this and should it warrant a new action by the ECB? Well, uh, the, the ECB, in my opinion, uh, under the chairmanship of uh, Mario, did a very, very good job in taking very important decisions, uh, including, of course, uh, the uh, liquidity insurance which is given to all banks and uh, which is the main weaponry of the ECB, including the OMT, which uh, played a very important role in giving a liquidity, quick liquidity insurance uh, to the countries that could have problems, uh, including with the very low interest rates, uh, including with the new decisions that are just taken and just uh, uh, implemented on the ABS, asset backed securities, on the covered bonds, and so forth. So that makes a lot. Uh, what is bothering me a little bit is that part of the market is permanently saying it's, uh, it's not sufficient when the, the start of the implementation of the previous measure is, is only going on. So I would say all this is uh, remarkable. Uh, we should not trust that the ECB has a magic wand and can solve all problems, it is not true. The magic wand does not exist. The magic wand is the combination of the good policies of the ECB and note that our risk-free interest rates in Europe, in the euro area, are 140 basis points below the risk-free in the US. So that is something which is uh, very, very important and uh, proved that the ECB did well in being accommodating. And, uh, and of course, you have the governments, you have the parliaments, you have the social partners, and it is absolutely clear that they have themselves their responsibility and they have to be fully conscious of their responsibilities. Turning to Italy, we are now for, uh, since 13 months in recession. Greece and Spain are doing much better. Why is it so? I think the explanation is that uh, Spain uh, had to embark on diminishing unit labor cost massively and uh, embarking on structural reforms massively uh, for obvious reasons because Spain at the moment of the stress, of the financial stress, Spain had a 10% current account deficit. So Spain was very, very imbalanced and they had to correct and it was absolutely unavoidable uh, and necessary. Italy, like France a little bit, was less imbalanced, had less problem, less dramatic problems and uh, did much less in terms of uh, improving its competitiveness. 
So you can explain the difference. And what is overdue, uh, it seems to me, in uh, Italy as well as uh, in my own country, is that uh, you have to regain competitiveness and uh, you have to regain competitiveness both in making all markets more flexible, including the labor market, and uh, working hard on the cost competitiveness of the economy.